Hello everyone. This week we will talk about inhalant and anabolic steroid misuse. We will also explore prescription and over-the-counter, OTC, substance misuse and identify basic principles of pharmacotherapy for substance use disorder, including those included in detox protocols. Inhalants are volatile substances at room temperature. In other words, they are in a gas, aerosol, or vapor form. Inhalant misuse involves breathing in these substances, inhaling them, in high concentrations. For example, they may be concentrated in plastic bags, in latex or rubber balloons or gloves, or soaked on cloths held over the nose or mouth. Inhalants include multiple substances such as propane, cleaning fluids and other aerosol products. Inhalants are selected for misuse because of their ability to rapidly induce euphoria. They can also have stimulant disinhibiting and hallucinatory effects. As soon as these immediate effects diminish, the individual may experience depression, dizziness, disorientation, loss of coordination, slurred speech, drowsiness, and headache. How common is inhalant use? Data suggests that 9.5% of 8th grade students have used inhalants sometime in their life and 2.1% reported current use. Anabolic steroids differ considerably from corticosteroid medications that are often used for treating inflammation. Anabolic androgenic steroids are synthetic compounds related to or mimicking testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that naturally occurs in the bodies of both men and women. Anabolic is the common name for these substances. Anabolic refers to tissue building. Androgenic means promoting masculine characteristics. Medically, anabolic steroids may be used to address delayed puberty and loss of muscle mass with certain diseases. All drugs have potential side effects. This is a common feature of both prescription and over-the-counter drugs. Pseudoephedrine is a decongestant, but it can be used in the illegal manufacturing of methamphetamine, or to promote weight loss or as a stimulant performance enhancer by athletes. Dextromethorphan is cough medicine. At extremely high doses, at 10 to 50 times the recommended dose, it becomes a psychotropic drug causing euphoria. It is often misused in combination with other substances, like alcohol or cannabis. DXM misuse can lead to impaired judgment, irregular or rapid heart rate, increased blood pressure, coma or death from overdose. There exists a wide range of OTC stimulant products on the market, many with questionable levels of risk and benefit. These substances, like bitter orange and mahuang, acting like ephedra, can cause nervousness and anxiety, tremor, rapid slash and regular heart rate, increased blood pressure, and stroke, as well as being potentially addictive. Loperamide is normally used as antidiarrheal medication. When it's consumed in large quantity or in combination with other substances, it may cause psychoactive effects similar to opioids. Prescription drugs that are often misused are opioids, central nervous system depressants, like benzodiazepine, amphetamines, like Ritalin and Adderall, and others. As cannabis becomes increasingly accepted for medicinal use, it too may become a subject of prescription misuse. Approximately 2% of Americans 12 years and older have engaged in misuse of psychotherapeutic drugs. Over 28,000 deaths from fentanyl and other synthetic narcotics have been reported in 2017. Prescription opioids contributed to 17,000 deaths. 15,000 died from heroin, 14,000 from cocaine, 11.5,000 from benzodiazepines, 10,000 from stimulants, and 5,000 from antidepressants. The United States Department of Health and Human Services produced a report in 2013. This report contained the following recommendations for policy and programmatic efforts that could help with addressing prescription drug misuse. These recommendations include Strengthening surveillance systems Building the evidence base for prescription drug abuse prevention programs Enhancing coordination of patient, public, and provider education programs among federal agencies And other measures that could effectively address this issue. Let's look at medications that can assist with substance misuse. Pharmacotherapy and medication-assisted treatment help with following Manage detoxification, detox, and stabilization processes as the first step in recovery. Reduce substance cravings to prevent relapse and support recovery. Manage short and long-term withdrawal symptoms to prevent relapse and support recovery. Help improve physical and mental health status related to co-occurring conditions. The following steps are critical. Evaluate the need for medically managed withdrawal from opioids. Address co-occurring problems. Integrate pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic therapies because medications are a part of a comprehensive, individualized treatment plan, 
that includes counseling and other psychosocial therapies, and mutual health programs. Detoxification detox is part of the continuum of care in addressing a person's substance misuse or substance use disorder and may involve an interdisciplinary team. It includes three steps. Step number one is evaluation of person's physical and mental status, types and amounts of substances involved and other biopsychosocial factors. The second step is stabilization. The goal of this step is to establish client's safe physical and mental status. The third step is to foster readiness for engaging in treatment. Several pharmacotherapy and MAT agents are used in the U.S. to treat substance misuse disorder. For example, withdrawal from alcohol can be complicated, and potentially deadly. Benzodiazepine is used as a first step to treat the withdrawal. However, is can cause memory loss, fatigue, confusion, lethargy, dependence, and other negative effects. Naltrexone was approved by the FDA in 1994 for treatment of alcohol use disorder. Naltrexone is an opioid receptor antagonist that decreases the positive reinforcing effects of alcohol use, thereby gradually reducing a person's craving for alcohol as the reward is not as strongly paired with the behavior. A campersate became an FDA-approved alcohol use disorder treatment medication in 2004. One of the benefits of a campersate over some other medications is that it is not metabolized by the liver. This is important in persons whose liver may be compromised from chronic alcohol misuse, or who might have hepatitis or other liver disease. Disulfiram works differently from the previous two. It creates an acute physical discomfort when alcohol is consumed. In learning theory terms, drinking behavior is punished by the physical consequences experienced. Of course, the individual needs to be motivated for change and have reliable access to the medication. If your client skips doses, it means they can drink again without the immediately punishing consequences. As in the case of alcohol withdrawal, the process can be complicated and potentially deadly, Therefore the process may best be managed with close medical supervision and management. Benzodiazepine is used in medication-assisted treatment of CNS depressant disorder. However, there are currently no FDA-approved pharmacotherapy treatments for cannabis use disorder. For cocaine use disorder, disulfiram and amantadine have been used to treat withdrawal symptoms. Bupropion, depiramate, and psychostimulants have also some evidence of effectiveness on cocaine abstinence. The withdrawal from opioid use can be complicated and potentially deadly. Therefore the process is best managed with close medical supervision and management. Naloxone can be used for immediate reversal of opioid overdose. As an antagonist, naloxone binds to opioid receptors and blocks the effects of other opioids, heroin, fentanyl, and opiate medications. It is either injected or sprayed into a nostril of a person undergoing, or suspected of undergoing, the opioid overdose. Naltrexone, previously discussed in the pharmacotherapy for alcohol misuse slash use disorder, is also used in MAT for opioid use disorder. Naltrexone is an opioid antagonist that blocks the euphoric and sedating effects of opioids, and reduces opioid craving. If a person taking naltrexone relapses to opioid use, the reinforcing effect of the substance misuse is blocked. The pharmacological effects of methadone are similar to opioids commonly misused. Methadone allows prescribers to help a person gradually withdraw and taper off of other opioids. Methadone maintenance therapy should be used in combination with behavioral interventions. Buprenorphine is another drug used in opioid use disorder treatment. Buprenorphine is a long-acting partial agonist acting on opioid receptor sites. But it does not produce the same euphoric or dangerous effects as commonly misused opioids. Buprenorphine may also be prescribed to manage chronic pain. Suboxone is a medication combining buprenorphine and naloxone. It reduces diversion for misuse of the buprenorphine alone. Nicotine addiction can be treated with bupropion. It acts on nicotine withdrawal effects, making it easier to avoid relapse. Varenicline is another drug that can be used. It acts by mildly stimulating the same receptor sites activated by nicotine and, at the same time, blocks nicotine's dopamine-releasing capabilities. In other words, it is both an agonist and antagonist medication. Therefore, it provides some of the reinforcement previously gained with smoking cigarettes, and decreases the reinforcement received from smoking again.